Hello friend, this is 13th video in microservice tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about Spring Cloud Config Server. In last video, we discussed about Spring Cloud Sleuth Zipkin and before that, we implemented Spring Cloud Sleuth. And before to this, we discussed about how to implement Circuit Breaker using Resilience 4J. Now, before moving forward, I would like to request you to please like and share this video and subscribe the channel. A microservice architecture is a distributed system in which we have multiple microservices and they might locate at different different servers. So in that case, each microservice has its own property file like this microservice will have its own property file. This microservice will have its own property file and similarly this microservice will also have its own property file. So in this way, if a microservice architecture is having more than 50, 100 microservices, then we have to manage each file separately for each microservices. And the biggest problem in this approach is whenever we have to change any property in the configuration file, we have to restart or redeploy our service. So to overcome this problem, we have a Spring Cloud Config Server. Here in this approach, is Spring Cloud Config Server will manage all the property file for each microservices. So whenever we have to change any configuration file, we have to come to only one place and change the respective file. And in that approach, we don't have to restart that particular microservice. The change property value will automatically come in effect with the use of a Spring Cloud Config to that particular microservice. A Spring Cloud Config Server uses Git, File Store, and many other options to store the configuration files. In this video, we will talk about git backed stories. So in this way, whenever we have to change any configuration file, we make those changes. And once we commit to the git, automatically Spring Cloud Config Server gets the updated value. And the respective microservice also gets that changed value without restart or redeploy of that service with the help of Spring Cloud Config Client. So Spring Cloud Config provides server-side and client-side support for externalized configuration in a distributed system across multiple applications and environments. Spring Cloud Config servers can store access configuration files to Git, SVN, file system, JDBC, Vault, Redis, AWS S3, GradHub, etc. In this video, we will be using Git backed system. And if you are using a Spring Cloud Config Server, then we don't have to redeploy or restart microservice application if there is a change in its configuration file. First, we will create a Spring Cloud Config Server, which will be Git back. In second video, we will add a Spring Cloud Config Client to a student and course microservice. And then we will see how a student and course microservices getting properties values from a Spring Cloud Config Server. In third video, we will add actuator to the student and course microservices to auto refresh changed variable whenever there is a change in the configuration file. So let's start and create the Spring Cloud Config Server. For that, as usual, we have to go to a Spring Initializer and we will choose all these things. I'll keep here code. I'll keep name as Config Server and this I will remove. Dependency here we have to use config server this one. Okay, and one more dependency we will use web. That's it. Generate after download. Let's import that project. So here is our config server Spring Boot application. And in previous videos, we created a student microservice. This is course microservice. This is Eureka server. And here we created gateway. Now let's go to config server pom.xml. So here we can see that we have a Spring Cloud Config Server dependency. Okay, now let's go to the main method class. And here we have to add the add the rate enable config server annotation to enable the config server. Now in application.property file, we have to say that on which port we want to run this application. So I will keep application.port equal 888. Now, since we are going to use git back storage, we have to add the git URI. And this is the location of the repository in the local file system. 
Here you can provide the online Git repository URL as well, like HTTPS and the address of the Git repository. So here I'm saying that my Git repository will be at location of C user admin desktop project and config. So let's go there and create a Git repository in this particular location. Now open command prompt and then CD that location. Now to create a Git repository, we have to execute few commands like Git in it and this will create an empty git repository in this particular location so this will add dot git file now we will add some configuration files there and then we will add those files to the git repository here is the folder where we created dot git file so once we create dot git file this means it has become a git repository now I'm going to add a configuration file, student-service. This is the same file which I was using for the student microservice. And here you see I have added an extra property message. And the value is saying message from student service. Now let's add this property to the git. So for that, let's do git status. And here it is saying that one property is added, student-service.properties and then we have to commit this property file so in message i will write added first file if you are not aware of this git commands then first read about this or if you want me to create some video on git commands then please write in the comments i will definitely try to make some videos on it so here we created a git repository we added a property file in that and this is the location for that git repository now let's run the config server now server is running at port number 8888 now we can access that configuration file properties using config server as well so let's go to the browser and we will go to localhost 8888 slash student service and then we have to call the default hit and here we go so here we have all the properties which we seen in our property file student service dot properties here you see since the property file name is student hyphen service so here also we have to call with the same file name student hyphen service slash and default this default is profile so when we hit this one we get all the details of that property file so here we see data dot url this and then this message and here it is saying profile default the git back configuration api provided by config server can be queried using the following path slash application slash profile slash label or slash application slash profile dot yml so here this application is the application name of microservice like in our example application name for a student microservice is student hyphen service and this profile is like development test staging and production this label placeholder refers to the git branch so whenever we work with git we usually create different different branches to manage our project Following this way, let's add two more property files for dev and production environment. So here I have added these two files. Let's see the data of uh, dev. Here everything is same, but in message, I have just added from dev environment just to make it different from other property file. And the student service prod dot property is having message, message from a student service from production environment. So here we have three files. This is for default profile. And this is for dev profile and this is for prod profile so if you want to access these profiles through config server then we have to run the same url with property file like dev so here you see the profile is saying dev and the message is saying message from a student service from development environment and this one is for the default one now let's change this to prod here we are getting the message from the production environment and the profile is also saying prod and this one is the default one we can access multiple profiles simultaneously as well like dev so here you see profile is prod and dev and this is development environment this is production environment and this is default one that's all guys for this video in this video we successfully set up our spring cloud server using git back storage in next video we will add a spring cloud config to a student and course microservice and then we will see how those microservices are accessing their configuration properties using a spring cloud config if this video is helpful for you then please like and share the video and don't forget to subscribe the channel
click the bell button to get notification for the upcoming videos thanks